Well, my name is Charlie Ware, and at one point in time, I accidentally became a pastor in a place called Marina Valley, California. And that's sort of a long and involved story. I won't go into that. But I, at the time that I became a pastor, I thought, boy, I really knew everything there was about church growth and ministry and how to, how to get things going and all that sort of thing. And during that time period, the Lord taught me something, and that was, you don't know anything. And uh, I learned that lesson very, very well. So I experienced a time period of what I would call reverse church growth. I was able to take a church of a certain size and get it down from 75, I got it up a little, and then we got it down to like 19. So when we got to 19, I remembered that Kenny Rogers song, you know, uh, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, know when to run. Well, it was time to fold that church. And so I remember very clearly, I, I had the people, we had maybe about 19 people. You had to count some more than one time, and maybe there would be a dog there or something, and you'd count that too, to have 19. But I told them, look, we're closing this down. Go to other churches, places where you like it better, and I'm going to do something new here. Well, the something new turned out to be something that I hadn't really planned for. Um, we had a group of kids that somehow I ended up in the cabin of a of the junior high boys at a camp in the mountains so I was there in the cabin with all these guys and, and of course the parents sent all the juvenile delinquents <laughs> to the camp because they were hoping they were gonna get saved so I'm in this and the boys you know they're making bathroom noises and laughing and messing around all night long well, of that group some of these boys formed a Christian punk band <laughs> Now, a Christian punk band is a little bit like, uh, it's an oxymoron, you know, kind of like military intelligence, that kind of thing. So you got a Christian punk band, and you have a guy that's 13 years old, and he's the lead screamer, okay? The band starts playing really loud, and then he goes, ah, nah, 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 you can't understand what he's saying, but when he gets done, your loudspeakers are burnt out. <laughs> so they were like... You know they were they were good. They wrote their own songs. They had a, they had a song that they did. The, I want to be a hardcore Christian. I want to be a hardcore punk. You know, and they do all this stuff, and they, they would and they like to skate. So when I was starting up my new thing that I thought was going to be so cool, uh, I said, Well, look, why don't you guys? We'll let your band play outside, and we'll set up some little skate things. And you know, who knows? Maybe you can invite some friends or something. And, you can do that outside the building, and we'll do this really good thing inside the building, and uh, you know, we'll take it from there. So uh, the night came, and uh, we had about 50 people showed up, and that wasn't too bad. That was growth from the 19. We got up to 50. That was, you know, 50 people showed up, but outside with these punk band and the skaters, there were like 85 people. Okay. There was a bunch of kids skating and a bunch of people watching them skate. And I remember in the middle of the deal, I said, I better go out there and see what's going on. You know, I went out there and there was a guy named Marv. And Marv was there. I said, Marv, here's two $10 bills. Run a skate contest. Uh, contest. I'll, I'll be back in a minute. And I went back inside and he ran the contest. And uh, I, you know, I know that I didn't know much. But I could see that God was doing something with skaters. So that summer, all during the summer, we had a skate night inside the uh, the church building. It was all still rough concrete floor, and uh, you know the kids would come in and skate, and they were just tearing that building up. It was amazing. You know, there'd be 110 kids there. They're all fooling around. There were only like two adults, so you know it. It was a madhouse. Cops were showing up. Everything was happening. Well, during that time, I took the Christian punk band to New Zealand. And we did little events and concerts and evangelistic type stuff. You know, about 80 kids got saved all over the South Island of New Zealand. And we thought that was pretty cool. And uh, on, the, on the trip back, just before I got on the plane, 
I saw a uh, like a CD. Uh, it was a no, it's actually it was a cassette. It said "Skate to Hell" on it. I thought "Skate to Hell." I got to buy that. You know, it's something. That's there's something there. So I got in on the plane from New Zealand. That's about an 11-hour flight. If you can imagine, I'm kind of a big fat guy anyway, and I was sitting with another couple big fat guys, and so the whole time on the trip, we just like squeezed in there like sausages. And I get off the plane, I drive to the place where they're doing the skate night. There's about 110 kids there. There's kids everywhere. And I told the Marv, who was still leading the thing with his wife Karen, I said, Marv, I think I need to say something to these kids. So I got up. And I said, I want to show you this little cassette I bought. It says, Skate to Hell. Well, I want to tell you something. There's no place to skate in hell. But in heaven, they've got streets of gold. And boy, you can grind the gold good in heaven. So if you want to skate to heaven, you just have to make a commitment to follow Jesus and accept God's salvation for you. If you want to do that, you raise your hand right now and I'm going to pray for you. Now, before I tell you what happened, 110 kids, a little short message, you know, not much should have happened really. I had been hoping and praying and God had been uh, talking to me and breaking my heart for the next generation for several years. And I had pastored this church and I really wanted to see a youth revival break out. I wanted to see p kids get saved. And nobody wanted that. In fact, as I told you, the church got small. So, here I am, fresh back from New Zealand, truly jet lagged. I make my little altar call. There's 110 people there and 75 of the kids raised their hands, stood up, whatever, acknowledged and prayed the prayer and accepted Christ. That's the best altar call I'd ever done in my life up to that point. And even though I don't like punk music, you know, I was the sound man and we were blowing out sound systems like mad over in New Zealand and I, I didn't even know what they were saying half the time. And even though I don't really like skaters very much, Jesus loves skaters. And he loves the outcast. And he gave us the skaters to minister to. And so that was just a little seed, a little beginning, a little vision of what God was going to do at a place we ended up calling the ranch.